I just want to say a few words on the final. Uh, it's an amazing experience to start with. I never had to present to that many people before. Certainly uh, new territory for me. Uh, the team behind this do really help you get to that, that perspective. All three of us here started as really like nervous introverts, <laughs> like super introverted, like, oh no, what are we doing? I think Mark was the only one that was at home here, <laughs> in fact. But they really do support you, uh, get you through this. They all want you to do well. And this is true with the audience as well. They all want you to do well. They want to see like really excited to be. They just want you to do your best work. So I know there's a lot of nerves going into this. I was terrified. Absolutely came through it all okay in the end. So I do want to talk about this sort of my comparison of what I did in the feeder versus what I did in the final because it's very much part of what I discovered. You're you are here presenting a visualization to this this large audience. So I went for a visualization that I could present quite easily. And it kind of struck me that despite all what we're doing in technology, we still fall back on things like PowerPoint slides. So I thought, could that be the worst thing? So you, when you look at these two visualizations, they are very different formats. And that's because of the presenting side of it. Over here with the feeder, you are passing that on to a judge. They're going to go through it and review their work in their own time. In the final, everybody's just watching you in the time you're given you are the one controlling what is shown on screen and what's not and you've really got to use that to your advantage so what i want to say here is that in the feeder the user is controlling that content they are the one picking and choosing those different answers in the final you are the presenter you are controlling what they see so it makes for a very different format that you want to put out there for example this visualization i did for the feeder is very much something that you can personally do if I was up there on stage answering these different questions, well, there'll be people in the audience who will say, well, I don't think this is punch and drive. I think this is youth psychiatry. And I don't think this is Ted Bundy's band. I think it's Chainsaw Massacre. They have their own opinions and they don't get to interact. So they feel probably a bit frustrated with this, that I'm picking all the answers for them. So the idea is that my audience can sit back, they can consume all this content, they can be like they're in the cinema watching, say, me talk through what it means for these hundred people, how many of them are going to be illiterate, what it means if they're a man or a woman for illiteracy, how things are going to improve, these personal stories that we're walking through, and then where we can go out and find and solve illiteracy today. As that pre You as that presenter are controlling what content is being seen on that screen. For your feed, it's more about handing that over to a user to have a bit of fun and to go through that content in their own time. Again, I'll talk through this a bit. I'll give you, I'll give you another example on this. So, if I was to show this typical dashboard here or a slide from the actual final I produced, in this dashboard, there's lots of information to go through. Your audience are going to digest this at different speeds and in different ways. So. Some people may be reading through the top here. Other people may have been through that. They want to know what's going on here. They want to know what this point is all about here, what's going on here. All the way through this dashboard, I will be slowly talking through this in comparison through these top numbers here. They will have scanned the entire thing. Whereas in this image is much simpler. There's not so much on screen for you to go through. There's only really the title, this block of people, this block of people, and these numbers. That's it. So I can use a tool by 3M called VAT. So the heat map here will show you the bits that are more highly concentrated. And the main thing is that there's quite a few. There's quite a few places that that audience eyes could go in the first few seconds. Whereas here, it's mainly concentrated on these main points. So title, number, block of people, number, block of people. You can also see this other view, which tells you about probability hotspots, where the user is most likely to look. As you can see, there's only two real spots they're gonna be in this slide versus over here, all over the place. So much information they could possibly take in while you're talking up there. So do consider how much information you're sharing with your audience at any given moment. Think balancing how they're meant to take this in, how they're meant to understand this work. So if you want to know how to go and build those different slide techniques, 
I've put a tutorial on Tableau Public for you. There's a QR code there, but in my Tableau Public profile, I've put together this tutorial about building presentations in Tableau. Special thanks again to Anna Miko for reviewing the work. We also put a link here to an idea of mine of combining this slide technique with this data stories functionality that was released in Tableau recently. So data stories allows you to build this bullet point summary of a data set. So I feel that this could be very useful hand in hand with the slide technique. So that you could have those slides populated in Tableau and now a bullet point summary of the data being shown as well save you a bit of time in terms of writing out those bullets. You can get Tableau to do it for you. I mean, really, this wraps up the series in terms of conquering IronViz. I really wish you all the best in your feeder competition. If you go into the final, I will be up there rooting for you. I have been there. It is not easy, so I wish you all the best. These are my main pieces of advice. So if you're going to focus your efforts, please do go and follow your passions, your interests, what you enjoy. Really try and show that enthusiasm, everything you like, and put it on the page for that judge to really soak up and in. It really does lead to your best work. Next up, think about triggering an emotion. This is really effective for making good, memorable storytelling. If you can get them to feel something, get them to trigger some kind of emotion, be it joy, be it horror, be it sorrow, that will stick with the judges and make your work that much more memorable. And that's all key part of storytelling. Lastly, the best way to deliver your work. How are you going to structure your piece of analysis, your visualization to have the maximum appeal? And think about that audience. Are they consuming it by themselves or are they part of that crowd at Tableau Conference? Think about the way you're going to deliver them, how you're going to then get them all on board with that content at the same time. And it's all about control. And that wraps it up. If you've watched the series, thank you so much. Uh, I wish you all the best and hopefully see you in Vegas. Bye.